Do you have a Bufwang UV5R, the most popular handheld walkie-talkie radio in the world? Do you not have any kind of license from the FCCs? Do you live in constant fear that if you push the talk trigger, you will face fines of up to $25,000 of monies or 10 years in prison? Then keep watching. But first, a two-part disclaimer. A, I may have made a video about this before in the past. I don't know. I don't even care anymore. And number one, I am not advocating that you do or do not do anything that I am about to discuss in this video. My role here in this relationship is to provide the facts about the rules surrounding the use of this radio and the facts about what will or will not actually happen in the real world if you break those rules based on information provided directly from the FCC's enforcement database, which I will link to in the information section of this video below. And if any of the truths of which I am about to preach to you makes you sad, then please do not make yourself look stupid and take it out on me by leaving a stupid comment. Instead, take up the FCC's lack of enforcement with the FCC's. That way, at least you can look stupid to the right people. And finally, I will do my very best to keep this video short and to the point, because unlike all of those other YouTubers, I know that you think your time is very valuable. The number one question that I see in the onlines is from people that have already purchased the world-famous Bufwang UV5R, and they just want to know if they can use it to talk to their friends while off-roading or hiking or playing airsoft or doing whatever it is the kids are doing these days. But then they go online and some people spin scary fairy tales about if they even think about pressing the talk trigger like this without a ham radio license, which I do not have, they will face fines of at least $10,000 of monies or more, or they will go to jail. And these fairy tales have been the cause of much concern and distress for many people that just want to talk with their friends using their Bufwang UV5R while out adventuring or doing other vigorous outdoor activities. So allow me to clear up the rules and share some facts about what will actually happen if you violate those rules. First of all, the Bufwang UV5R is a ham radio unless you purchased the very new GMRS version. But we are not talking about that. We are talking about the good old plain Jane UV5R, which is intended to be used on the ham radio frequencies by people with a ham radio permission slip, often referred to as an amateur radio license. If you have a new Bufwang UV5R, it is probably locked, meaning that it will only transmit on ham radio frequencies. You might be able to unlock it, meaning that it could then transmit on other frequencies, or maybe not. However, if you have an older Bufwang UV5R born before 2021 or so, it is probably unlocked, meaning that it can transmit on pretty much any frequency between around 130, my gigahertz, up to around 500, my gigahertz. And it is this ability to transmit on any frequency, which is why so many people unlock their radios or seek out unlocked radios. I will talk more about that momentarily. So even if you are just using your Bufwang UV5R, like a walkie-talkie, to talk with your friends on ham radio frequencies, if you do not have a ham radio license or permission slip, you would be breaking the FCC's rules. And this could make ham operators very sad if they are within listening range of you and your little Bufwang UV5R and they might give you a hard time. And this is one of the many reasons why so many people desired an unlocked UV5R or any radio that's unlocked, because if it is unlocked, they can transmit on the FRS 
or MERS frequencies. Because those frequencies are totally different from ham radio frequencies, no license is required for those frequencies, and the ham radio operators have no claim or authority on those frequencies. However, the problem with using those frequencies is that, according to the FCC's rules, the Boofwang UV5R is not approved or type accepted for those frequencies. So technically, using your UV5R to transmit on FRS or MERS frequencies would also be breaking the FCC's rules. Why? Because the FCC says so. That's why, and don't you dare question anything that the federal government tells you. Will the FCC's track you down and give you a $10,000 fine or put you in jail? for simply talking with your friends on those frequencies using one of these radios. Based on the record of the mean letters, fines, and jail sentences that the FCC has enforced in the last 10 years or so, if you are simply talking to your friends and not causing interference, jamming repeaters, or doing other stupid things, then one might infer that the FCC will not do anything. Sometimes when using their Boofwang UV5R, many people will just randomly choose a frequency and start talking on it with their friends. However, this could actually be a bad idea because one could randomly end up choosing a business frequency or even a frequency used by emergency services, which has a much greater chance of getting the attention of the FCCs and not in a good way. This is why so many people spend 30 seconds on Google to look up the FRS or MERS frequencies and use one of those frequencies instead. Even though, as I just mentioned only moments ago, it is still technically against the FCC's rules because the FCC says you can't use a Boofwang UV5R on those frequencies. At least those frequencies are open and are intended to be used for talking to your friends. And just to help eliminate any potential confuculation, contrary to the fairy tales that you may have read online, nobody will be able to tell what brand or type of radio you are using. Yes, it is true that technology may exist. Many people say that it does not exist, but even if the FCC's has that technology, they are likely not going to drag it out to wherever you and your friends are talking to try and figure out if you are breaking the rules or not. And as long as we are talking about what the FCC's could do, yes, the FCC's could triangulate your location and track you down. However, based on the FCC's own record of enforcements over the last 10 years or so, they have never gone to all of that effort and expense to track someone down for simply talking with their friends while hiking or off-roading or whatever without a license. And it is also true that ham radio operators, or anyone for that matter, can also triangulate your position and track you down. I have actually done this myself several times. Of course, they have to be within receiving range of your little 5-watt walkie-talkie radio and it will take them much effort and time, and you have to be transmitting long enough and often enough for them to do the tracking. But then what? As you might imagine, having some stranger run up to someone and start screaming and crying and demanding that they stop talking on their walkie-talkie radio might not end well for the stranger. And because ham radio operators, regular people, and even police officers have zero power or authority to do anything about what frequency you're using on your Boofwang UV5R, unless you're robbing a bank or something, all they can do is threaten to report you to the FCCs and add their report to the pile of thousands of other reports and complaints that the FCCs receives every day. Which, when you look through the enforcement record of the FCCs over the last several years, will usually result in nothing. Maybe a mean letter, but even those are rare in the last several years. My friend, the moral of the story the TLDR, if you will, is if, for whatever reason, you cannot or will not get an FCC's permission slip and you cannot or will not use the correct type of radio, then at least do not be a dickhead with your radio. And more importantly, when you hear the fairy tales about getting fined or going to jail, 
always, always ask for a link to that enforcement action in the FCC's enforcement database. Because if that enforcement is not listed by the FCC's, it did not happen. <laughs> <laughs>